This video is about how to get help uh, when learning to use R and taking this course. Uh, because, the, because of the size of the course and the number of students uh, that are enrolled, um, it's going to be difficult to, to be asking lots of questions uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And so we're going to have to resort to a few other tools to get ans questions answered, in particular the discussion boards uh, and generally through email. And so um, there's a certain type of way to ask questions that will kind of that will hope to maximize the chance of you getting the right answer or the answer that you're looking for. Um, and so at, the main thing to remember is that asking questions via email is, is a little bit different from asking questions in person. Um, you don't necessarily know that the people on the other side, the people that you're asking, for example, on a discussion board or on a mailing list, have the, you don't necessarily know that they have the same background information that you have. Uh, furthermore, they may not know you personally and so may not know your kind of what you mean when you say certain types of things. Um, so uh, that's kind of important to keep in mind when you're e when you're emailing questions as opposed to when you're talking to someone in person. Um, keep in mind, that, of course, that elder people are very busy uh, and their time is limited. And uh, although they may, may be willing to help you by answering a question, uh, they may only have a certain amount of time to devote to answering that question. Now, I am here, of course, to as the instructor to help you in all circumstances. Uh, but furthermore, I may not be able to answer all possible questions. And so you want to you're going to want to use the resources that you have available to you in this course. Um, so in your search for answers, uh, there are a variety of things that you can do on your own before uh, venturing off to ask other people for the answer. Um, so if you're going to be uh, emailing a question to a forum or to a mailing list, it's important that you search the archives of that forum uh, for the answer. So it's possible, and depending on the size of the forum, almost very likely that someone has asked the same question that you're asking. Uh, and if someone else has asked that question and it has been answered, then the answer is going to be in the archives of that forum. So if the answer is already there, you'd save everyone a lot of time, including yourself, uh, if you search the archives of that forum and just find the answer. Uh, of course, the web uh, is very large and has many answers, and your first reaction sh if, when you have a question is to search the web. Um, um, for, uh, for given the type of program you're using, for example, here we're using R. There are many manuals that are available, uh, and many answers will, may exist in the manual. There's a frequently asked question or a fact that's on the R website uh, that you can look for that contains many questions that are commonly come up, uh, up on the mailing lists and on the forums. Um, Another thing that you might want to try to do before go venturing out to ask people the, for the answer is to play around with the problem uh, tr and try to find the answer by inspecting or exper experimentation. So maybe if you have a function that's not working right, maybe change the inputs and see, as, see if the outputs change or if the error message changes. Um, if, you, if you're lucky enough to have a skilled friend who knows something about R, uh, you can ask them personally, and it'll be easier to. It's usually easier to ask the pers a person. Uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis than to email a group of people in a, in a forum. Uh, furthermore, and lastly, if you're a programmer, uh, you may be able to find the answers you're looking for by reading the source code. So all the things on the previous slide uh, are, are useful things to do on your own before venturing out to ask people questions. However, if you don't find the answer, um, it's, it's important to let other people know that you did all those other things on the previous slide. Because if, for example, the answer is in the documentation uh, for the program, for example, it's in one of the R manuals, then someone who knows the answer will usually respond by saying, read the documentation or read the manual. And then you just wasted one round of email. Because uh, you'll have to respond saying, I did read the manual, and I didn't find the answer there. Uh, and so it used, letting people know that you've done, all, you've done your homework and you've, and you've looked in a variety of places is very useful, and it saves a lot of time. Um, so here's a, just a very simple example of what might happen uh, as you're using R. So here I'm loading the datasets package, and then I'm going to load the air quality data set from that package. And then I want to run the correlation function on this air quality data frame. So uh, immediately I get an error. It says error in core air quality, missing observations in cove slash core. So you might be wondering, well, why am I getting this error? What does it mean? Um, so the first thing you can do is go to Google. And in many circumsta circumstances, uh, Google is going to be your friend. And this is no different uh, when you're learning a new programming language or when you're learning R. And so the easiest thing to do is, is to take the error message that you get and literally cut and paste it into the search box for Google. Uh, when I search on that, I get a number of results. And uh, particularly, this third result looks very promising. Uh, it looks like uh, someone asked this question on the R help mailing list. Uh, and it looks like, um, and so maybe maybe worth clicking on that to see if someone replied with the answer. 
So when you ask a question on a mailing list, so assuming that Google didn't wasn't able to help you out, uh, you're going, if you're going to ask a question on the discussion board or on the mailing list, uh, there are a couple things that you need to think about before you ask that question. First, is it possible to reproduce your problem? So is it so when if someone else can reproduce your problem, it makes it a lot easier for that other person to figure out what the solution is going to be. Uh, and so if you can provide some code or some a very simple example that will reproduce your problem, this will be enormously useful. Um, to the, to everyone else involved, uh, and if you don't do this, typically the first response that you'll get will be, "Can you please provide a reproducible example?" Um, second, uh, it's important to understand what you expect the output to be, because if your expectation is wrong, then of course uh, your it, it may or may not be an error depending on what your expectation should be. So what you expect the output to be will indicate kind of wh how what the nature of the error and what needs to be solved. Uh, and then given your expectation, you need to say, well, what do you see instead? So what was the thing that was unexpected that gave you the question? Um, other information that's important to specify when you're asking a question is the version of the product you're using. So for example, for example what version of R uh, are you using? What version of the R packages you're using if it's specific to a given package? Uh, because often uh, there may be legitimate bugs in, versions, in older versions of R or R packages and that the, your problem might be solvable if you just upgrade to the latest version. So if you're using the latest version of R, it's important to mention that. Uh, sometimes it's important to know what operating system you're using. So whether you're using a Mac or Windows uh, or Linux or some other Unix machine, it's, it's, uh, some uh, problems can be traced to the type of operating system that you're using. And depending on the question that you have, there may be additional information that you need to provide. So when you send an email to a forum or to a discussion board, um, it's important to get as much information in there, as much, as much useful information in there as possible. And this includes the subject line for the email. So um, there's a couple of examples of subject lines uh, that kind of range in usefulness. So the first one is probably the least useful. Uh, it just says help can't fit linear models. So here, uh, there's very little information here. All I know is that there's something, there's some problem with linear models. Uh, I don't know anything else about what the user's problem is. Uh, so the second version is, is, is much better. Uh, it tells me that on R version 2.15.0, uh, the LM function produces a seg fault, uh, which meaning that R crashes uh, with a large data frame. And it's, furthermore, it says I'm using Mac OS 10, 10.6.3. Uh, 10, 10 so here I've got the operating system, the version of the operating system. I've got the version of R. I've got what function I'm using. Um, and I've got a, a summary of what actually happened. So just a little bit smarter than that uh, would, would just be to reformat the message so that I specify what version of R I'm using, the, the function, and then the version of the operating system. And then, and then so that gives me the context. And then after that, I can say what the problem was, which in this case was seg fault on a large data frame. So here, the, uh, the important details are right away put in the subject header uh, before I even get to the body of the, of the message. So a couple of things that you definitely want to do when you're asking a question on a forum or a mailing list. Uh, the first is to describe the goal, not the step. So you may have many, many steps that you're going through, uh, and maybe one of those steps is causing a problem. Uh, and it's useful for other people to know what the, your, what the bigger picture is in terms of what you're trying to do. Uh, because, for, for example, they might have a better idea about how to go about achieving that goal, which may be faster or simpler, and may work around whatever problem you're having. So describe the ultimate goal, and then uh, talk about what the problems are, and don't just narrow down to the, to the one little step that you're having a problem with. Um, be explicit about your question. So remember, provide details um, about what you're trying to do. Uh, and, and you have to provide the minimum amount of information necessary. So not the maximum amount of information, the minimum amount of information. And so it's common to see on some mailing list uh, posts that you know lots of output is produced. And that's not very helpful, because volume uh, it doesn't really help you in terms of diagnosing the problem. We need to know exactly to narrow down kind of where the problem is going to be. So, um, and of course, a couple of things. Uh, you know, being courteous never hurts anyone, uh, and it uh, and promoting civility on mailing lists is always a nice thing. Um, and if you find the solution later on, uh, it's useful for everyone else in the community if you follow up with the solution and explain kind of what the problem was and what the problem was and how you solved it. 
Uh, a couple of things you definitely do not want to do when posting to a forum. Uh, you don't want to claim that you found a bug. Uh, this happens all the time, and usually, I'd say 99 times out of 100, it's not a bug, and it's just a misunderstanding about what should have happened, so a, so a mistake in the expectations of the user. Um, groveling is a substitute for doing your homework. That's not usually uh, looked well upon, uh, and you definitely shouldn't do that. Uh, definitely don't want to post homework questions on the mailing lists or forums, uh, and, and the reason is because people who write the homeworks the homework questions uh, are reading those mailing lists and will be able to identify all homework questions uh, without a doubt. So we've seen them all. Don't bother trying to get the answers to your homework on mailing lists. Um, don't ever m email multiple mailing lists at once. So this is uh, a little bit annoying because people will be uh, subscribed to different mailing lists and will be getting your message uh, more than one time. Uh, it's useful to, it's important to Figure out which mailing list is the most appropriate mailing list for your question, and then send the message to that mailing list or forum. Um, and then lastly, don't ask others to de debug your code uh, without giving some sort of hint as to what the problem might be. So it's, it's, it's very difficult when a person posts a long listing of code and says, there's a problem in here somewhere, I don't know where, please help. Um, it's better to give... Uh, to kind of specify where you think the problem is and what you're trying to do uh, so that everyone can save some time. So uh, this is just a very brief case study on uh, using a recent post to the R Devel mailing list. So the R Devel mailing list uh, is an email list for people who are doing development work in R. So either they're developing packages or they're making modifications to the R source code itself. Uh, and so the subject was, so you can see from the subject that it's going to be a problem, the subject is large data set dash confused. So right away you know there's not that much information here to go on. It's not clear what the problem is. Uh, and the message just says, I'm trying to load a data set into R, but I'm completely lost. This is probably due to mostly to the fact that I'm a complete R noob, uh, but it's got me stuck in a research project. So uh, you have to ask yourself, what do I know about this person's problem from reading this message? Uh, and the truth is, um, very little. Um, and so the response was somewhat predictable. Uh, basically, the first person response said, yes, you are lost. And then there is a, po a pointer to the posting guide, uh, which everyone should read before e uh, sending an email to the mailing list, uh, and then also a list of manuals. Uh, and so here you can see that uh, one round of email was immediately wasted because probably the answer to the question was in one of the manuals. Uh, and and so, um, and the user didn't specify whether he or she had already done that. So, in terms of what went wrong with this little exchange, uh, first, of course, the question was sent to simply the wrong mailing list. The R Devel mailing list is for development questions uh, and for more sophisticated programmers. It's not really a mailing list for uh, questions for, as this person stated, uh, noobs. So, that question really should have gone to the R Help mailing list, uh, where it would have been better received. However, in addition to that, the email subject was very vague. It was not clear what the problem was. The question itself was very vague. Uh, there was no reproducible example there. There was nothing. There was not possible for other people who were reading the email to reproduce what that person's problem was. Uh, and for and there was no evidence that any effort was made to solve the problem. So there was no evidence that they searched the web or checked the manuals or tried or experimented with the problem or anything like that or even looked at the forums. And so the end result was a complete recipe for disaster, uh, and there was, there, and it's likely that this person did not get the answer to their question. So. A couple places to turn uh, for this course. First of all, the class discussion board I think will be the most useful uh, because your fellow students can help you out there and I can respond to you uh, on the discussion board. Um, outside of class, there's the R Help mailing list, uh, which I just uh, described. Uh, and you can post to this mailing list as long, and it's useful to, of course, follow all the rules that we talked about just now. Uh, then, depending on what other projects you might be working on, there are other project specific mailing lists for other types of. Uh, software. Uh, and so this talk was inspired by Eric Raymond's uh, uh, posting called How to Ask Questions the Smart Way. Uh, and I encourage you to read that. It's much longer. Uh, it has a lot of uh, other useful tips.